let's go learn about a complex flow here we use at web cafe ai when combining zapier as an automation platform and open ai api for the artificial intelligence we're going to be diving into multiple ways we can approach using chat gbt in this context so you might learn different ways you can start leveraging gbt in your automations for your business this is going to be a complex workflow i'm going to walk you through step by step just from start to finish everything you need to know about one of our complex workflows we use here at web cafe ai Welcome back to the channel, y'all. I'm Corbin AI. As you may already know, let's go ahead and jump in today. So video I want to do today is that one of our domains for our corporate account here at webcafeai.com is that we showcase different AI businesses. And one of the processes during this website here is you can submit your own business. So when an individual fills out this form in regards to their specific business, we go ahead and process it and see, you know, goes through a bidding process and see whether we want to list it on this website. So a situation I was facing was I didn't, the data that we would receive would come in in a very particular way. So let me go ahead and show you what that would look like. Okay, so I went ahead and filled in our form here with some just test data here. As you see here, we're gonna take the place of a real estate company. We're gonna go ahead and just fill in the links here, just fill in the information so we have something to submit. I'm gonna hit submit for review. And then as you'll see, when we receive this as a data point, it isn't like digested correctly and it isn't how to make it so it's operationally easy for us so it can automatically be listed or vetted for us okay so when we receive a form on our website here as you see this is how the data comes in which would then require me to go to our back end here and i would have to add it manually right add all the data points the name manually the link manually you know the tags manually the descriptions manually that's too much work let's streamline it and let's automate it with artificial intelligence and automation over the past week during this giving, I went ahead and created this within two hours. This goes over ways we can start using ChatGPT in the context of reformatting data and really more complex methods rather than just like, hey, give me a social media caption. So the way this process works specifically for us is that we will receive a contact form and that will get triggered, right? So once that gets triggered here, we're gonna first add a filter block. So the purpose of this filter block is to um, go ahead and make sure we don't get like spam messages. But one thing I want to do real quick is I'm going to go ahead and edit this real quick and actually put in the test data that we just received here. So let me go do that. Found our test data here. I went ahead and just went edit and then, you know, obviously click, you know, find new records. Here we go. We're going to go and proceed with this record here. So I'm going to say continue with selected record. So this is the flow here. First thing we want to do is we want to add a filter block. So this can be very useful in whatever context you want to add this into your automations. This is kind of a advanced filter in the context of automation as it allows us to exit out of automations if they're... Uh, you know, if they're useless or deemed useless. So for us, the way we went ahead and filtered our block here is, as you see here, it's not showing it correctly, but it, if I go ahead and just find the data title here, um, let's go ahead and find that as well. So as you see here, we have it structured like this. We gave context. We said we received a submission of a business to be listed on our website. Then we provided the, the submission data. So we said form submission data. Um, the reason I'm talking like this is because uh, when we reference it later, it's important in prompts to make sure you reference and clearly identify what you're identifying, if that makes sense. So for this context, we're saying form submission data, we're gonna do business title. So our way of gut checking, whether it's a spam or not spam, is allowing ChatGPT for us, this is gonna be our business name here, is allowing ChatGPT to basically look at the submission and identify based off the title and description that was submitted in the form, is this deemed at a certain extent, not spam. Now to give you context, some spam form submissions I've gotten in the past was someone just straight up putting in the same character. So putting in like, you know, triple A or like someone quite literally put spam in the form. So the idea is this, if someone were to put a title that seemed not correct or not like a business title or a description that doesn't seem like a correct description, we're gonna get an output of no. So this allows me to save on automation task and you know not go through this entire flow here. But because I gave some real data here or some data that could pass as real in this context, such as the name being real estate AI and then the description being, we run an AI company to help buy houses, this is gonna be deemed as true, yes. So I like having this set as a model of GPT-4. In theory, this can work with 3.5. It may require a little bit more prompt structuring. In your context, if you choose to do so, make sure you add a filter key. This isn't, I called it filter BS. <laughs> this is important as this ensures that the way it structures its outputs is either yes or no. And it's very important that it maintains that kind of structuring as that's gonna, what it, that's going, that is what's going to allow us to exit early, as you see here. So I hit continue here, as you see from that underlying response here, 
you might get some past responses here. If I hit reply, we should find a answer of yes. So uh, yep, right here, content yes. So as we go from here, this is how we proceed. Now we add a simple filter block here. The filter block, and you could probably already interpret, you could add a pass block here if you have different variables rather than a Boolean of yes or no. Maybe there's different paths you wanna go down depending on the type of content. For us, it's just yes or no. Is this spam or is this not spam? If the reply from ChatGPT is yes, and exactly matches yes. So if this reply, so if I go to filter here, I type in reply. If this reply, the output of ChatGPT is yes, you wanna put exactly matches yes, then we're gonna proceed. This is because if the reply was no, then we would exit out early, saving us automation task. And just to send this home, as you see here, we added the quotation marks, generate yes if submission is real or no if the title and description are not real. There we go. We passed our very simple logic for a filter here. Let's move to our slug maker. So you might, what is a slug? Uh, check the URL right now in your browser. So slug is like the, um, for our context here, it is the link, right? So this is how a link looks. Typically with slugs, you can't have special characters in them. Has to, it looks best when it's all lowercase and we're using dashes. So what we did here is instead of going through the process of formatting it with JavaScript, let's just use GBT here. And what's best is we can use a lower model like 3.5, which is really, really cost effective. So our version or our way of creating a slug in this context is going to go ahead and say, here's the text input. You don't have to get much context. So we're just reformatting the data. We're going to say format the text input to be all lowercase. And if there's any spaces, add the dash. Notice how I'm adding quotation marks when I want to be specific here. And if you're a little lost up to this point, just to clarify what I'm doing here and the process I'm building out here is to automatically create a listing on our website. E.g. all of this data is inputted by software and not inputted by me. Let's go ahead and proceed. Obviously, we need a memory key ensuring consistent outputs. So the next step here is that part of our listings has um, two main items. So the two main items for our listings is there's going to be the listing itself. So in this context, this is the software or the AI tool that's being leveraged. E.g., let's just go to the front end and show y'all real quick. So for example, if I come to PDF Reader here, this is the listing for us. If we wanna to go to the business that operated or owns that listing, we go to business profile, and this is the underlying business. So. In this process though, we got to kill two birds of one stone because the actual listing itself requires a business as well associated with that. So to kill two birds of one stone here, we're going to go ahead and create the business and the listing in the same automation flow. To do so, what we did is that we just create another item. This is going to be, you know, pertinent or whatever is associated with your platform. We're going to create another item here. We're going to go to our collection of businesses and we're going to go ahead and uh, input all the relevant data that we found in that submission. So for business bio, we're adding the description. For the email, we're adding the email that the business put in the form. For the Twitter link, uh, we're putting in the Twitter. Twitter link, that's cool. What is the Twitter? Check me out on here if you have a Twitter. Random thoughts, AI stuff, cool stuff. Um, <laughs> location, San Francisco. Business name is going to be the business name input in the form. And then the business link, which we is going to be the slug maker, which we identified before as this is going to allow us to put in the correct formatting for our underlying link here. So if I come over here, this is our underlying link and links need it. I can't put an, um, you know, I can't put a special character there, like a curly bracket that would make it so the link's broken and you'd run into errors. So proceeding from here, now we're gonna get into some uh, pretty complex stuff here and you're gonna be able to leverage of AI and speed layman and not deal with code. Cool. This is gonna be our tag creator. So our purpose of our tag creator here, as this looks a little confusing, is right now on our website, we have nine different ways to niche down your underlying listing. E.g., let's go to Web Cafe Marketplace here. We have the tags of market uh, marketing and productivity. So basically just giving more context of what the underlying AI tool is or software. Knowing that though, we have, you know, how do we automatically have it so that a tag is added to the listing as well? This is how we do it. So the way the data comes in from our form is the individual is, you know, if they selected design, so I come back over to the form here. If they selected design, e.g. I click that, it's going to be true. If I don't select it, it's going to come in as false. So knowing that, we know we're dealing with booleans here. Therefore, if they put false for chatbots, we don't want chatbots on this listing. So what we do here is, I mean, I'm speaking a little bit of their language here. So I'm saying boolean tag data, all boolean is, boolean is, is true or false, yes or no. That's all it is in this context. And what we do here is that we identify the specific data point 
So for us, CRM, true or false, false. And you know, that's coming in live from the underlying form itself. But the idea here is this. Um, first off, I want to point out as well, data CRM, the front facing or this automation doesn't actually see the word data CRM. The only thing it will see on this data point is false. That's why I add CRM here. But proceeding from here, as you see here, we are provided with four different trues automation, chatbots, marketing, e-commerce, generate an output for, of the only true tags in the data. Cause we don't care about the false format, the structure tags, tags with commas and just output the tags, no text before and after. That is a nice little dictation right there. No text before and after. If you have any issues with outputs, use that so you don't get the annoying little bit. Oh, this is your caption, by the way. I don't want that. I want the caption. Dude, that's a nice little trick there. 3.5, cheap, tag out, memory key, and boom. If I hit this, retest this step, we're gonna get a structuring of tags and commas. As you see, we did that. So we got automation, chatbots, marketing, e-commerce. Proceeding from here. This is where it gets a little bit complex, but by showing you this, you're going to be able to be like, oh, okay, now I can do some cool stuff. So the problem is the way that at least Webflow works and this API works is that you can't actually input. So when we're building out our create our business listing here, I can't put in uh, for the tags automation. If I put automation there, it's not going to work. So the way that Webflow, this is my context, it might be different for whatever back uh, back end you use, but this is good to know because it might be a little bit uh, formatted a little bit different than you expect. So for the way ours works is, for example, uh, we get our tag creator here and we get the output of automation. Coming over to our Webflow here, if I go to uh, automation, I can't put automation. So what I do put is the item ID. So that's how it commutes and com communicates in the context of software. Uh, so that I can do this automatically for you. It might be something specific to Shopify or WordPress, whatever it may be that might be holding you up in certain contexts. Keep that in mind. If I can, if I put automation there, it'd be an error. But if I put the item ID there, it's going to be automation, but that's just how it communicates. Knowing that I had to add a little bit more complexity to this automation. Therefore, what I had to do was I provided the tag data. So I went to every single one of those tags, CRM, productivity, social media, and I provided that ID I just showed you in the automation itself. Therefore, then I provided the tags that were chosen based off the previous output. So then we can go ahead and choose, uh, basically choose the IDs that are associated with this underlying form submission. But then on top of that, I said, okay, here's business context, the business description from that form. Based off this business context, and the tags chosen only output one tag and basically the tag ID that would fit best. E.g., does the social media tag fit best in this business context? Does the automation tag fit best in this context based off the tags chosen? Knowing this, if I come down here, GBT4, tag out ID uh, for the key, continue. Now retest this step. We're going to get one ID and it's going to be specific to a specific tag. Boom. There we go. I'll zoom in a little bit here. So now we go ahead and proceed to our next step here, which is a little bit more simple. Um, same idea here. Every single category for our under, underlying Webflow backend has an associated ID. So if I go to GBTs here, we got an item ID right there. Therefore, for us, what I did is said based off the category chosen, this is a little bit more fixed here. Go ahead and just give me the ID. So as we know here, based off the form submission of AI tools, the ID associated with that is going to be the AI tool ID. Therefore, Based on the business category chosen, I'll put its ID, just the ID, no text before or after. Then we're gonna go ahead and continue. And since that was a little bit simpler logic, because it's very like, just give you ID, I went ahead and opt for 3.5. Continue, test that step, and we'll be good to go. So, and we get to the final leg here, which was creating the business listing itself. So this is just connecting the dots at this point. Listing category is going to be uh, choose category. Listing tags is going to be the tag that we got right here. Business is going to be the underlying business we created here. Um, E.g., we created the business for the business listing. I'm going to go ahead and run this all live so y'all can see it live. Moderator, this is a fixed piece of text because we currently only have one moderator here, an AI moderator called Brew. We went ahead and grabbed the fixed text of Brew here and put Brew right there. Uh, Americano, black, drink it straight, best way to have coffee. Uh, listing long description provided the long description from the form there and you know for right now I have for the the different links associated with the listing I have it in the about and have the name and then I have the underlying link here so this is a cool little trick here so the link itself I don't want it to have the same uh, 
path as the business link here. So what I did here is I took the, the uh, slug we created here and I just added dash AI dash business. Therefore the listing has a separate uh, domain link than comparative to the actual business itself. So this might sound a little confusing. So I'm going to show you all live here. Knowing that though, we have successfully set up an automation. So when an individual submits a form, it puts it all into draft, as you see here, and allows for discretion on whether we want to accept it on our site or not. On top of that, um, notice that it's not perfectly done yet. E.g. the links, the website link and the image links aren't perfectly done yet. This is still a work in progress as I plan on making this even more, you know, more effective at automatically putting links and stuff of this nature. But up to this point, this does basically 90% of the heavy lifting here when it comes to how we categorize and how we input data for businesses. Therefore, let's see it in action, shall we? So I'm going to go ahead and retest this up here. And with this retest, if I did everything correct, I may have messed up. We should see a new business here. And we do. And it's in draft. Here we go. So all relevant information here. Perfect. So now with this new business listing, I'm going to go ahead and come down to, sorry, with this new business now we come to the underlying software that it's selling, which is going to be the business listing. So I go ahead and continue here, retest this step here. We're going to go ahead and proceed and we should see a new listing set in draft. And there we go. So here's the thing. And just to clarify a little bit more on this, if I go to real estate AI here, notice how the business link has start up or apples. That's really random. I know. Um, and then the listing itself has startup startup or apples dash AI dash business e.g. two different pages. As I said before, that was the difference between basically I'm on, let's learn about the PDF. This is the listing comparative to let's go to the business. This is the business, right? So we did, we killed two birds with one stone here. Don't call PETA. Um, that works though. Everything works. Everything's flushed out. Everything's connected. That is kind of the wrap of this tutorial. I wanted to show you this because it, this is kind of niche as I know this is like, you're, unless you're actually listing, like your business is a index of other businesses and you list businesses, then this is not niche and you just hit the gold. But if it's not, if not, and this is more niche for you, you still learned a lot when it came to OpenAI's API and ChatGPT and how to structure data, how we can talk to data. Like think about the tag creator, then the tag to ID. Think about the slug maker. This negates the ability for us need to understand JavaScript and we can speak to it in layman terms. So if you feel like you learned something so far or up to this point, or at the end of this video, make sure you leave a like, it's completely free. Uh, if you like this kind of content, you wanna see more of this content, I'm gonna leave a playlist at the end here. We're diving into Zapier, all 5,000 apps and everything we can do with them. On top of that, this channel consists of me talking about business, me talking about artificial intelligence, me doing more simple stuff when it comes to just understanding how to use ChatGPT and these AI language models, and then me jumping into more complex stuff like how to automatically input data into an Excel sheet so you don't have to do that ever again in your life. So without further ado, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for tuning in. And yes, surprise, I'm an AI avatar. Make sure to explore more here at Corbin AI, where we demystify AI for your personal and business life. Until next time.